real funny. Yep. Hey guys, welcome to Red Baron Reviews. I'm Baron, and today we are taking a look at this Colt Retro Cobra. This is one of the newer versions. Before we get started on this review, there's something I got to tell you guys. I smoke pot. That kind of pot. Took that from Hickok 45. Anyway, guys, enjoy the review. So for those who don't know with revolvers, this is a speed loader, kind of old technology. But the way it works is open your revolver, drop it in, twist, and in a theory, it comes out nice and easy. And then you're ready to go. So another great option for reloads, especially concealed carry, are these speed strips. Now there's nothing really speedy about them, but they are faster than carrying loose rounds. So in a self-defense situation, you're going to be able to do this? Yeah, probably not. But if you can get somewhere where you reload, it's an easy way to carry. Fits right in this pocket right here perfectly, and you don't even know you have them. So decent option, but you're still limited to a revolver and the downsides to a revolver. So guys, as always, before we dig into the review, I'm going to go over the gear that I'm using. If you want to skip ahead, here's your timestamps. So with that, of course, we have the Colt Cobra. We've got my speed strip. Reload, and I know the ammo needs replaced. It's getting old. I've got a Beard and Owl pocket organizer with a Olight and then a Great Eastern Cutlery cap lifter. These are phenomenal knives. I wish they still produced these. I've got my Hitch and Timber wallet. Inside of this, there's a pen and a notepad. And then I'll show you guys the holster because I think it's actually worth showing. It's a pretty high quality holster. This one is the Simply Rugged Pancake Holster. Um, it is an outside the waistband holster, but you can get these optional straps for inside the waistband. And then additionally, I opted to have a thumb strap for this so when I am carrying outside the waistband I can have dual retention on the gun. Not that you really need it, these are secure but it's there and you can pick everything from the color to the design on it. Really high quality good holsters. With that since my belt's already undone might as well take it off. It's just a handmade leather belt. As you can see it's got a bow in it just from carrying. This is where I always carry so and then lastly, this time of year, I generally carry a larger knife. In this case, it's a Buck 110, which I think really complements this whole setup, both in color and in the vintage of it. And then leather sheath for it. So, oh, and lastly, Oakley Holbrooks. These are the metal version, polarized. That's my setup. So now that my setup's out of the way, we're going to talk about the specs, which I'm going to throw up on the screen, but I'm going to talk more about how it feels, how it carries, how it handles, because that's more relatable to most people. So chances are, if you're looking at this revolver, you are already familiar with revolvers. I'm going to be using Smith & Wesson primarily as my comparisons for this, because those are so prevalent in the carry world. So with this, it is an all steel frame revolver versus most Smith & Wesson J frames, are typically aluminum, scandium, something like that. And if they are steel, they're still a little bit lighter weight than this because they're a smaller frame. This rests somewhere between a K-frame and a J-frame as far as the size goes. And the weight, if you were to compare all steel J and K-frames, is kind of right in the middle. In my opinion, in carry revolvers, this is the Goldilocks of revolvers. It fits the perfect size, in my opinion. With it being a steel frame instead of alloy, it absorbs recoil pretty well. This gun is actually really pleasant to shoot. Uh, it does have a little bit of snap to it, but nothing like an aluminum J-frame. Not quite as comfortable as a K-frame, but almost there. Very comparable to K-frame recoil with standard 38 Special. With Plus P's, it can be a little bit of a bear, but it's not too bad. And if you switch these retro style grips out, or if yours came with like the VZ grips or the Hogue grips, it's going to be more manageable as far as recoil goes. So if you're recoil sensitive, 
this might not be a bad candidate because with standard 38 specials, I can shoot two, three, four boxes at a time and it doesn't really bother me. So the all steel frame is definitely a plus. Uh, as far as carry goes, honestly, I forget it's there. And I, I think that that goes with most carry guns. If you are carrying four, five, six, seven days a week, after a while, you kind of forget it's there unless it's like an L frame or something like that. But for most most handguns that you're going to carry, this is a comparable weight. Like a loaded Glock 19, this is probably pretty close to that. You kind of forget it's there when you're carrying it. So it's very shootable because of the size. It's still easy to carry. I have no complaints about the weight or size of this gun. In my opinion, I think it's perfect for a carry revolver. As far as aftermarket's concerned for this gun, there's quite a bit still out there. Now, not as much there as there was at the beginning, but things can still be had. If you want this style of grip, it can be found. You can get G10 VZ grips. You can get rubber hoe grips, G10 hoe grips, wood hoe grips. There's a wide variety of different grip styles and materials that you can get. And I'm going to throw in the VZ grip pictures that I have here. So you can definitely change this ergonomically to fit you better. And if you're using those rubber hoe grips, it's going to tame recoil a little bit more. So there's definitely some advantages to that. So another aftermarket feature on this gun that came from the factory is this brass bead front sight. Now what Colt did is that they made these sights easy to change by the user. All you have to do is loosen this screw here and your front sight will come off and you can put a variety of Colt sights on there. They make a fiber optic, they make a tritium, they make the brass one, and I believe they make an all steel one. The problem is Colt has failed us because none of those are ever in stock. You can never get them. Occasionally you can find fiber optic ones, but it's very hit and miss. But if you're wanting the brass bead or the tritium sight, good luck. You may be able to go to excess and find one. I haven't checked their website, but by and large, you get what you get with these on the sites. There is a wide variety of holster options for these. So that's really great. Now let's go ahead and take a deep dive at what I think of this gun after putting six to 700 rounds through it and carrying it for the last two years. So I bought this back in July of 2020. And since then I've carried this more than any other handgun I own in that period. If I had to put a number on it, I would say 80% of the time, this is the gun that's with me. In my specific situation, a revolver with six shots is generally adequate for self-defense needs. There are times, obviously, that depending where I go, higher capacity is king, and so I take a different handgun, but by and large, this is what I carry. In that time frame, I've put six to 700 rounds through this conservatively, which isn't a lot, but for a revolver, especially in this size category, I feel like that's more than most people are going to shoot it. And so I feel like I have a very well-rounded basis to give you guys a review on this. With that, let's get into the positives. So for the positives, I've kind of mentioned a few of them, but we'll go over it anyway. The size. In my opinion, this is the perfect size carry gun. In between a J and a K frame, you get six shots instead of five, and the all-steel frame is not too heavy to carry, but it's heavy enough to help absorb recoil at a 38 Special and a revolver this size. So, awesome. The sights, this one in particular, having that brass bead front sight, I really like. As long as there's daylight out, you have a very good front sight to reference. The grips, the OEM grips that this model comes with, I absolutely love. I have a size small hand, I wear size small gloves, and fits my hand perfectly. I think even somebody with medium hands would be able to get along with this just fine. If you have large hands, you might want to look at the Hogue grips or the VZ grips. I do have those. I put a few hundred rounds through this revolver with the VZ grips, and I lean more towards the old school Colt grips. The trigger pull is nice. Uh, it's not like way better than any other trigger out there, but it's definitely nice. The double action has a very defined wall. And then the single action is par for the course. Uh, compared to a Smith & Wesson, it's, it's right there. The double action, I will say, I think has an advantage over most factory Smith & Wessons and the fact that that wall is so defined. And it's not all the way back here. I find that on the Smith & Wessons, when you, when you get to that wall in double action, you're already almost back to the frame. And even me with small hands, it just feels cramped before you get that break, particularly on the J-frames. Also, the trigger pull is a lot lighter than factory J-frames in double action. It's a nice trigger. 
compared to the old Colt, old Colts, uh, particularly the Detective, which I think this most resembles. I know it's a Cobra, but the Cobras were alloy framed. The detectives were steel framed. Compared to either a Cobra or a Detective, I would say that it's not a fair comparison because those older Colts from gun to gun varied considerably in their trigger pulls. One could have been shot more, one could have had work done to it, and it could have simply been that the gunsmith at the factory had a good day one day and a bad day the next. Every Colt revolver that was built back in the good old days, so to speak, has a slightly different trigger pull. By and large, I wouldn't say that this is a vast improvement over those, though. I would say it's different than those are, but not better, not worse. And that's about it for the positives. So let's get into the negatives. So this is the part that's going to upset a lot of people. So understand, I am not a Colt hater. If anything, I love Colt, and I hold them to a higher standard than most companies. But I'm not going to sugarcoat this. There are some major negatives to this gun. And so let's go through that. We'll start with kind of the minor ones. So depending on what's more important to you, the finish to me is a negative. It just looks cheap. But I will say this. It's extremely durable. It's a black DLC finish. The other ones, I think, are a satin. The gray-looking ones, I think, are a satin DLC. It is an extremely durable finish. I will give them that, but it just looks cheap as hell. And, you know, if, you're, if it's a carry gun, you're going for durability. I get it. I'm not going to ding them on that. But this does not look anything like an old Detective or Cobra. Not even close. Another thing that, it's not a detractor for me, but it is for some, is this bulge here on the barrel. This is to help you reholster, and in theory, I guess it's a good thing. I, I don't care either way on it, but it doesn't really help a whole lot because you can see there, it's not flush with the frame. Another thing that's a big bummer is the knurling on this. This is some of the poorest quality knurling I have seen. I This is something I'd expect to see like on a Rock Island revolver. I mean, it's... It's crap. It is. It's a shortcut. Not a fan of that. I do like that they enclosed it. That was a good thought. They did a good job with the trigger guard, and like I said, the trigger pull is it's good. I like it. But look at the trigger. This is caster mem. They have a whole bunch of cast and mem parts on this gun, and that's the thing. They say it's it's new manufactured, it's modern, it's superior to the old guns. And maybe in some ways, I would say that Cobra to Cobra, they're all, the trigger pulls are more consistent. They're all about like each other. You know, it's a cookie cutter gun now. But again, if you're going for that old Colt reputation, this doesn't hold a, a candle to that. Not only is this cast, I think the frame is cast in the vast majority of this gun. I mean, you can see here, they didn't even take the time to polish underneath the finish. It's like they just cast it, kind of knocked off the rough edges, and then threw this DLC coat over it and threw it out the door. Not, not great. Um, the sights are, are good. Uh, for being a trench sight, this is good. I can't complain about that. But again, cast trigger, the hammer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see this on camera. Yeah, there's cast there. If you take the grips off, which I'll throw a picture up, it's cast underneath here too. At least get rid of those marks. I mean, come on. like that's. I, it's not like you're asking for much there. It's not going to take a lot of extra time. Like you DLC coat the, these other screws, but you can't do that one. Why? I just, it drives me nuts. Uh, the grips are really nice. I don't think these are new old stock. I think these are a newer production. They may not be produced when this gun was made, but I don't think that these are old stock. Let's get to why it went to the factory. So first off, I dropped this a few months into owning, owning it. It, I was cleaning it, you know, had it out, fell off a coffee table onto the wood floor and broke the grips. Not a big deal. I ordered VZ grips because I like the look of them anyway. Threw them on there, problem solved, and kept shooting. Got about 400 rounds into this thing. I was doing some dry fire practice with snap caps, and I was pulling the trigger, and then tried to pull through. Got real gritty about halfway through the trigger pull, and then I felt something give. And after that, it just wouldn't do anything. It would just kind of spin freely. And I shook the gun, and you could hear something rattling. Pulled it apart, and a little piece of cast metal fell out of the gun so a critical component part in this gun is caster men so for being superior i sure never had an older detective or cobra that I put a ton of rounds through break on me like that 
this straight up snapped, whatever it was. So I had to send it back to Colt. Now, Colt's customer service is great once you get a hold of them. It took me about a week, week and a half of calling them almost every single day, and I could not get a hold of anybody. You can't email them. About the only thing you can do is mail them or call and hope they answer. Well, finally, somebody answered after about a week, week and a half of calling multiple times a day, and from there it was smooth sailing. I got a gentleman who's named Eric, and he was phenomenal. He set up the ticket, sent me the return packaging slip, all that, and from the time that this gun was mailed off to the time it was mailed back, it was like 13 or 14 days. So they certainly didn't sit on this when they got it at the factory. They fixed it, got it back to me really quickly. I will say that the description of what was wrong with it was pretty vague. Uh, they said it was the hammer. I, I don't think so. I don't think it was a hammer. I think it was another part, but it doesn't matter. They got it fixed. They got it back to me quickly. So they're, once you get a hold of somebody, their customer service is phenomenal. But it's frustrating that that's how you have to do it. A phone call, which most of the time they don't answer, or or write a letter. Like this, we're in 2022. I, I expect better, particularly out of Colt. So I hate to end the review on a negative note, but it is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat things for you. If you're buying this for self-defense, just don't. Don't do it. It's made with poor quality materials. No matter the cost of it, poor quality materials, it's going to be a liability it could malfunction on you and cost you everything. Yes, it's the grimmest worst case scenario, but when you buy a self-defense handgun, it needs to be reliable. So I would stay away from it for that, pur from those purposes. Now, for collecting, yeah, you may buy it. it it's 700 bucks, 750 bucks. Sure, it's probably worth that. It's a Colt. And even if this turns out to be Colt's worst revolver they've ever made, because it has that pony on it, it's gonna climb in value if I had to guess. So yeah, if you want one to add to the collection, I would say do that. It has cool features. It's a good concept, but they cut costs on materials and that botched the whole thing. Should, would they have used better quality materials and taken more time in producing this revolver? I would have been willing to pay a thousand to $1,200 for this easy if it was gonna be dependable and made out of quality components. I would absolutely carry this thing and I would love it because I want to love this. It's the perfect size. It has a good trigger. They made some really good design features in my opinion that yes, it's a departure, but it makes the gun more ergonomic and better. But if you're using crap materials, you can't depend on it. And the whole thing is basically worthless if it didn't have the Colt name on it. So with that guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down in the comments. You know, like, share, subscribe, click all the buttons, you know what to do. And as always, and most importantly, stay free. Slowest reload ever. <laughs>